Hi gorgeous, this is episode number 60 with the wonderful master intuitive Katie Bray. Hi, this is Katie Bray. You're listening to Heart Cells Podcast with Christine Schlonsky. Enjoy. I am so pumped you are back and you are listening in today. So we have an amazing guest and we are going to go deep on creating, on manifesting, on how to get your business up and running from a very intuitive perspective. And Katie Bray is a master intuitive. She is a professional clairvoyant and gifted empath whose direct and loving approach has been game changing for those seeking to achieve the next level of success with greater confidence and authenticity. As a psychic, she is exceptionally well-versed in transformative techniques for accessing information and fast-forwarding growth and has created her own style that is unique, adept at helping individuals gain access to what slows down their manifestation process and being fully in their power. In fact, her clients say that working with Katie is the most powerful partnership they've ever experienced. Katie Bray is a lifelong clairvoyant who went to become a Vedic master, a herbalist, a practitioner of Tantra, and is a non-denominational ordained minister. Her body of work is based in multi-dimensional living. She has worked with over 12,000 individuals and has led more than 100 group teachings. She helps us to see the patterns of our humanity and how to get unhooked from the things that get us stuck. I'm so super excited to have Katie on the show today. And also before we dive right in, make sure you sign yourself in for the Sales Mentality Makeover Masterclass to learn spiritual and practical steps, how to increase your sales and create true wealth without losing your authenticity. The class will start in May, so make sure you sign in now and reserve your spot. It's a free online class and I'm going to bring to you amazing rock star entrepreneurs who have had quite some challenges in their lives, but who overcame it and who will teach a very important segment that if you implement it, you probably will change your business and your life. So let's welcome Katie. Well, I am so happy to have you here today, Katie, and I can't wait to dive into your amazing story. Um, yeah, you are highly, you're an empath, and I think lots of people listening are very sensitive and empathic. Mm -hmm. um, so can you give us a little bit more background on your personal story? Because the journey has been amazing. Um, and how, yeah, yeah, show us a little bit more that people might not find um, elsewhere. Yeah, well, my story and being an empath is definitely, <laughs> it's definitely interesting. So I was actually, um, as many of us are, I was born empathic, but I was also born clairvoyant, which is a little bit more rare and something some people just don't talk about much. <laughs> Um, but what I found was being in the world felt very hard for me for a long time. Um, I felt a lot more comfortable sort of letting my imagination run or, you know, just being elsewhere, let's say. And by the time I reached the age of, it was about 16, 17, I know that I was, um, I was going into my senior year of high school. I know that. And I was, um, unfortunately, I was sexually assaulted. And then af right after that, my, both of my grandparents died. And I was very, very close to them. And then just after that, a lifelong friend of mine was killed in a car accident. And so you can imagine that as someone who doesn't feel deeply, um, those are all very hard things, especially in a pretty short period of time. Mm. That, that, that's just hard, hard life stuff, right? Um, and for me, not only was it hard life stuff, 
I didn't understand that my empathic nature was picking up on so much more that I was feeling the feelings of in my family uh, with my grandparents passing. Not only was I feeling my own, I was feeling everyone else's, especially the kinds of things that are really hard for other people to have access to and to really process were the things that I was processing. Um, and so it was the same with my friend. He was a teenager. He was killed in a car accident. I mean, it's always tragic when people die, of course, but I mean, this was a 17 year old kid. Um, mm. And so, you know, dealing with my friends and all the people affected by that, I just had this unbearable time. I just, I literally didn't feel like I could bear it. And I wondered, you know, does everyone feel this much? Am I going crazy? Um, you know, it, it wasn't so much that I was judging myself as much as it was like, is this really what life is about? I mean, really, that was a big question that I had because I was in so much pain. I just didn't know what to do with myself. And what I found from there was that alcohol really numbed those feelings. Mm. And so I spent the next several years um, drinking a lot to the point where I had a serious alcohol problem, but I wasn't addressing any of the empathic stuff. I wasn't addressing any of the emotional mental stuff, you know, with having PTSD from my assault and just, just the grieving process and losing a friend so tragically at that age was very hard for me to reconcile. Um, so I ended up, I ended up on a bunch of different, um, like head medications. I was drinking. I ended up staying in bed. I was agoraphobic for, and for those of you who don't know, that means you're scared to go out anywhere basically in short. So I lied in bed for two years and I just self-medicated. Um, and so I, I had a pivotal moment where I heard this voice say to me, it was just one night. And, and I heard this voice say to me, you got yourself into this. You can get yourself out of this. And I was never the same after that, but it did take me. I mean, I went right into therapy and I went into AA and I started doing the things that I really needed to do to get my inner house back in order. But it did take me time, years, a few years to understand that part of what I was dealing with that therapy wasn't helping me with, although I'm a big fan of therapy, it helped me hugely, but it wasn't reaching the part of me that was so empathic and energetically sensitive. And so I really made it a big part of my life's work and my mission to, no matter what I'm doing, um, to really educate and inform and support people who have this additional layer of sensitivity that if, if you don't have it, it's very hard to understand and relate to. I mean, I admit that freely. It's, it's, it's like explaining to someone who hasn't been in a war or been through childbirth what it's actually like. You can conceptualize it, but really grasping it and connecting with people is very hard. Yeah. 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 I, to I totally get it. And it's, um, it's so interesting because being um, an empath, um, yeah, like it, it's a different scale on the emotional level, <laughs> yes. right? So, um, and it, it's really interesting because so often, and you know, this podcast is about how those beautiful people with these amazing gifts can enjoy sales, mm. which usually is something that's, you know, scary to people or dreading mm -hmm. where they say, mm -hmm oh my goodness, if I just think of sales, my stomach turns, yeah. I want to run away, I worry about the people and their money, I feel like a scam, like all this stuff is coming mm -hmm. up. So when you really are into this emotional world, it, I would guess it's even more difficult to adjust your mindset to a place where you can first of all, embrace your own gifts, value yeah. your own gifts, yes. and then finding a way of how to make offers with confidence, with ease, with grace, that somebody else actually has the opportunity to, to get your support and to buy from you. Mm -hmm. So you had this like amazing turnaround. And I know so many people have been in really, really difficult situations. Yeah. 
Uh, we definitely all have our challenges. Since we all have our own filters, it's difficult to compare like, oh my goodness, your challenge right. was so much bigger than mine. I know. It's, um, gosh. Yeah. So, um, and you know, I mean, this is um, an audio podcast, so people don't see you, but you're shining bright. And, you. Um, you know, you have this wonderful energy um, that, that shows that, I guess somebody that doesn't know you would have never, ever guessed the whole story behind that. It's true. Whenever I share it and, or, and I'm out speaking in front of people, they look at me like I have a thousand heads where I'm like, no, I used to be that woman. I was over 250 pounds and I was hiding in a corner because I didn't know how to have a conversation. That was me. <laughs> yeah. It's and, and I not think, even close. <laughs> yes. And I think that's so inspiring because now you hear now you're mm -hmm. actually a leader in your field, right? Yes. And for people who want to check you out a little bit more, I mean, I do have it on the podcast page, but leadwiththelightson.com. Yes. yes. Amazing name. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's really what you're all about to, today. So how did you find um, the way to start your own business and start actually selling and having these mm -hmm. um, conversation that, that for so many people are so difficult to have. Yeah. That's a great question. And that's, that's why I really, I love and value this podcast because I think it's a really important conversation. Um, I think, unfortunately, a lot of us are still conditioned in some capacity or have been to think that, you know, sales is that slimy thing where you're trying to, you know, get something from someone else. Basically, you're trying to get money from someone else and you just happen to be giving them something in, in exchange, right? Yeah. And it's really important to change that conversation. Um, and, and I think in that, changing the conversation around money is also important, that money is not the root of all evil. The love of money is the problem, I trust that a lot of people these days, and particularly, I would imagine the people who listen to your podcast are not greedy people who just want money above anything and everything else. Um, and, I, and, and, and I know I had to turn a lot of my own stuff around, like you were talking about in the beginning, just that fear of sales. Oh my gosh. I... I actually, for so long, was so afraid of sales that I was, I, I was actually on food stamps at one point in my life. And a lot of that had to do with my lack of understanding of my value. It wasn't that I didn't have value. It was that I didn't understand that my value actually meant something to someone else. And what I had to start remembering was what a pleasure it is for me when I go to see someone, it, whether it's a practitioner, whether it's some kind of service, whether it's a product, that it's a pleasure for me to give them money because I want what they're providing. I'm going to them because I want what they have or what they can give me. And it is an absolute joy to know that the money that I am giving them is actually supporting their ability to keep providing what it is that they provide. And so I really had to switch that conversation around and start from there because I am such a heart centered person who would, uh, my default is to do for everyone else before I do for myself. And on a daily basis. I have to look at that. I don't care how much work yeah. I've done. That is, that is my Achilles. I have to look at that all the time. And so when I could look at it from that perspective, and, and I love when you were talking about, you know, being an empath and sales. And I actually think another way to reframe our ability to feel all of those things in sales is, is there, it is an important reframe that being sensitive or empathic, however you identify, um, is actually our superpower because we know so well how to connect with other people. And when we really believe in the value of what it is that we are offering and we know that what we provide will add value to someone else's life, as sensitive people, we meet them where they are. We speak their language. And I do not mean this in any kind of manipulative way. 
It's, I really do want to support you in this. And if it feels right for you, here's an opportunity. Let's partner on this together or let me provide this for you. And this is just an exchange. That's all that it is. So I think being sen sensitive or empathic is, is one of the great powers that we have in sales when we remember to use it in integrity with who we are and in a way where we know that it is mutually supportive. That's what sales are. It is, it is a system that is mutually supportive of two or more groups of people who are the mutual support is helping each other through life. No matter what it is, that's what, that's what it is. Yeah. Yeah. And, and I so agree like this exchange. I think one of the big challenges is to understand the difference between value and perceived value. Because yes. when you look at yourself and I just thought that in my, um, heart sells smart start. <laughs> <laughs> Say that five times it as is, fast as you can. <laughs> yeah, it is. Uh, and that makes a big difference for people. Like, how you see yourself because it's your gift it's your experience it's what you are trained at or what you learned you're really good at it so it's easy yeah. it's fun and mm -hmm. you could do it all day long no matter if you paid for it or not right but the difficulty that comes with it and you mentioned that earlier is then you have difficulties to sell your services mm -hmm. because for you it's not that big of a deal yes but for the other person, the perceived value, it is life-changing, maybe even life-saving. Yes. And to wrap our heads around this, to be able to make an offer and to ask for money, mm -hmm. I think that's like a huge step. It's a huge step. And I love that you touched on that because something that I say a lot to my clients in, in a different context, but it's the same thing. It's, you know, you're... Your gifts are so normal to you that you don't recognize them as being your unique gift to the world uh -huh. because it's your normal. Yeah. And, and that's fair. But when we're looking at sales, it is a relationship thing. So part of what we do in any relationship, if it's a healthy one, in my opinion, is we put ourselves in that other person's shoes. We, we connect and wonder what is it like to be in their world in, or to be in their life and what, you know, so there's that built in idea that we can step into someone else's shoes. And so when we do that, your gifts are going to appear very differently. All of yeah. a sudden, if you're standing in someone else's shoes and looking at yourself and your offering not going to seem so ordinary anymore. I don't care what it is. I mean, I, people could argue with me on that. I'll argue all day about that. I am sure <laughs> yeah. because we, we all have gifts. We're all here to offer something. Yes. That's why we're here. There there's yeah. to me, there's just, there's no way around that. Yeah. And, and I totally agree. And, and that's why I'm so passionate about this topic because I see so many people struggling mm -hmm. giving their gifts to the world because they are missing this sales piece yes. where they actually have an exchange for their services. And this simple energy exchange is called money. Mm -hmm. <laughs> and that money um, helps us to pay for our dreams, yes. to support our world and to be able to, to offer services um, because we are not only surviving and, you know, mm -hmm. are uh, capable to pay, pay the bills, but mm -hmm. we can do something that makes our soul sing. Maybe it's traveling, maybe it's giving to a good cause, what, whatever it is. Mm -hmm. Um, the more money we receive, the more value we have delivered. Yeah. And, and to add to that, I mean, I think we all know this, but if we're in survival mode, we're not really in our gifts. We're so busy fighting to live and fighting to pay that bill and fighting for food. And it puts us more in that sort of animal primitive place because we're animals. That's our instinct. And so when it, when it becomes a situation where we don't have enough money and we don't feel capable of asking for what we need, we're basically putting ourselves in that survival mode where we do, or we can start to feel disconnected from our gifts. 
you know, life does really change when you feel like life is solely about survival. And, and unfortunately, I think a lot of people were taught that there's certainly an era not that long ago where that was still pretty much what life was like. I mean, the depression wasn't that long ago, technically, in the scheme yeah. of things. Yeah. It's still within our generations recent enough. Like our parents were raised, a lot of us, our parents were raised by people who grew up in the depression. So they experienced that. Then all of that is laced with this depression mentality and survival mentality. So I really, I honor the work that a lot of us have needed to do and are doing and, and podcasts like this who are really elevating us from that survival place saying life is not about survival. And it doesn't mean that you're entitled to, you know, X, Y, and Z. It does mean that just by being alive, you have all, it is, it is already stating in your existence that you have gifts and you have something to bring. And there is this exchange that we use to make that possible so that you can thrive and you can be happy. And I don't think there's anything more um, powerful than us living in our gifts and being happy. Yeah, I, I so agree. And I also agree that when you are in this place where you need something, where you're in the scarcity survival mode, you are pushing away all these amazing things. Yes, because neediness is such an energy that doesn't call in. It's pushing away. So yes. I think it's so super important to to be mindful of how you approach um, people in a conversation. Mm -hmm. Are you coming from that place of yes. love? Are you staying in your heart, mm -hmm. or are you just operating out of your ego or out of mm -hmm. neediness? Yeah. And that, and that makes me think about something that I see often. Um, and, and this can actually be with a lot of different things, uh, but particularly with money where, you know, I want X amount of dollars because I want to not feel scared. I don't want to feel insecure. I don't want to, you know, get kicked out of my house. I don't want to lose my car. There's, there's a lot of that's, that's this insidious form of lack and fear, but a lot of people will approach it that way. And, and that's the same kind of conversation. So I think, you know, if, if anyone who's listening to this does that where they want something because they are trying to avoid something else, that that's going to create that same kind of resistance that you're talking about, that what it, what we're really wanting to do is sort of shift our position enough to say, I want to experience a sense of freedom. I want to experience a sense of expansion and choices and stability or whatever those things are that this is, I'm aiming for something lighter, more elevated. That's more in front of me, not this fear uh, that's behind me. I think that that's a tricky little place where self-sabotage mm. can really come into our mindset and still be in our own voice and sound really normal. <laughs> yes. Yeah. So with all your experience, what would you recommend? Let's say somebody, especially, you know, in the entrepreneurial world, you have your ups and your downs. Oh, yeah. And sometimes these are really nice ups. It goes really high, mm -hmm. but it does go really uh, far mm -hmm. down as well. Like what could you recommend if somebody is right now in this place where they're really trying to get enough money in to just pay their bills? Like where mm -hmm. could they start right now to make that shift? Mm -hmm. So Whenever I feel like I've gone to a down spot, whether it's with, let's say, a project that I've wanted to get off the ground and it's just did not take off the way that I wanted or um, in a lot of different ways, I start to look for what I call like bridge statements. Things that, because a lot of people will go into affirmations and I find that a lot of us are intelligent enough to know that what that we're lying to ourselves. <laughs> um, and so I go to a place of, wouldn't it be amazing if I could 
see this from a different perspective. Wouldn't I feel so much lighter if there was a solution that I'm just not seeing right now? Wouldn't it be amazing if a different perception revealed itself to me or a solution just showed up? Like I really start to open up my creative capacities, even if I can't think of something specific. And actually I think specifics can get dangerous. Hmm. So I look at opening up the energy. One of my favorite ones is excitement because I, I happen to be very playful. I love joking around. I love lightheartedness. I love, um, a certain kind of excitement where I just feel open and elevated. So I, I go into excitement mode, not pep rally. I'm lying to myself, (laughs) but I say, you know, I know that I am a wealth of resources and I, I feel really excited that something must be getting birthed right now. Something is coming. I can feel it. Or I know it. Life has taught me that with every death, there is a rebirth. With every time I touch the ground, it always makes me rebound to go even higher. So those are just some of the tricks that I use. Um, and, and sometimes I'll reach out to a mentor. Sometimes I'll look on YouTube for other stories of other entrepreneurs who are like, yeah, I got my butt handed to me, but that's actually what had me end up having this multi gazillion, whatever, because that one mistake or that one, you know, really terrible down moment is exactly what I needed to lead me to that. Mm. So I, I look for all the possible reminders that I can wake up inside of myself. I think the bottom line is I am always looking for a visceral experience in my body and in my being that reactivates this idea that I am this living, breathing co-creator and that it is not done until it is done, that there is still plenty of life and ideas in here as long as I can feel some kind of animation in my body. So that's what I go to first. Yeah. Yeah. I love it. I think it's so important to have that connection to your body. Yes. Um, and yeah, well, I, I love taking walks and kind of walk negativity out of me. Yes. <laughs> yeah. Uh, or like, you know, dancing or just listening oh, yeah. to, to yes. wonderful music that, that lights me up. Mm-hmm. So I, I totally get that. It's, um, it's wonderful. Yeah. So basically it starts with a positive emotion and that will help you to move forward and create more of this positive emotion um, because like attracts like. Yes. Yeah, Yeah. it does. And, and here's, here's something I think is important to say too, that I'm not a big fan of just change your mind and things will shift. And I'm not a big fan of denying what is you are experiencing. What I am a fan of is opening up the possibilities because we do live in a universe where the possibilities are infinite. So it's about sitting in the experience of what feels true and real in that moment without putting blinders on and eliminating all other possibilities. And that's what I think is most important. Wonderful. That was really a great finish to this episode. Thank you so, so Thank very much. You. I'm looking forward. To, yeah, I'm looking forward to continue. Yes, me too. Thanks for being here. Thanks for having me. I always get so inspired by these wonderful stories of achievement and of really overcoming the challenges. And I think Katie is just a beautiful example of how to pick yourself up and really go for what you truly desire, aligning yourself with your true self, being authentic, true to your values, and really, really going for it and creating, manifesting the life you truly desire. So I'm very happy that uh, Katie will be back for the next episode. So make sure you tune in and uh, we will learn quite a lot from her next time as well. To learn even more, um, please come and join my free Sales Mentality Makeover Masterclass, which is an online event taking place in May. You can go and sign up at christineschlonsky.com. 
pick the tab in the menu Masterclass Sales Mentality Makeover Masterclass 3, sign yourself in, and then I will bring that class to you in May so that you can learn more spiritual and practical steps to increase your sales and create true wealth without losing your authenticity. Thank you so much for being here. I'm so excited for you and I would love to know more about your path. So whenever you feel like it, just reach out and let me know what's going on. Um, what are you working on? And also, if you have questions for Variety Friday, please shoot me an email at info at christineschlonsky.com. Thank you so much for being here. Have a wonderful day wherever you are in this beautiful world and bye for now.